So these statements that with that 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 people are making, to me, they don't make sense because they don't match the reality of what's actually happening in church. Taste makers. Class. We do more to make a living. We make a life. Yeah. When everything is dark, we are the light. Yeah. We are the taste makers. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Let tomorrow tell the stories that we make tonight. We do more to make a living. I found this to be interesting here. Uh, matter of fact, uh, this one was sent to me by one of my um, a pastor uh, that I've kind of grew up under um, and have known for many, many, many years. And he sent this to me. I said, this will be something that we'll probably end up talking about on the show. Uh, deconstructing the church, starting with the green room. And I'll just go ahead and read this real quick. It says, if we're going to destruct, deconstruct the church, then let's start with the green room. So what's the next joint? It said, what is the green room? In a show business, the green room is the space in a theater or a similar venue that functions as a waiting room and lounge for performers before, during, and after a performance or a show when they are not engaged on stage. Green rooms typically have seating for the performers, such as upholstery chairs and sofas. What, when is a green room appropriate in the church? When hosting a guest pastor or speaker, smaller meetings or special events, conferences hosting multiple speakers, a place for the pastor to pray with staff prior to service. When is a green room not appropriate for church? Sunday mornings for band and singers to hide out all morning. Social gathering room for staff when congregants are in the building. Exclusive for only those on the platform. By separating those on the platform from those they serve beside or staff and those they serve on Sunday morning, we are contributing to a celebrity culture that implies that on the platform there are more uh, that on the platform are more special or more tired than those working the same hours in the same trenches in ministry. Yes, musicians arrive early for practice, but so do nursery workers to disinfect toys and prepare rooms, first impression teams to make coffee and set up foyers, and other pastors who arrive early to prepare for the people. And they don't get a special room away from the people with snacks. <laughs> if we're going to tear anything down, let's start with the castles we built on holy ground uh, to house mere mortals based on talent and remind everyone even a microphone is a mop in the kingdom of God. Mm. Okay. Green rooms. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think of what was just read? That was that was asinine and that was very misinformed and that was very a I think I know what I'm talking about statement. I don't okay. know who wrote that statement. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if that has that person ever been to church in their life or they one of those people that got that got comments on everything going on in church but ain't never step foot in one because that's usually where it comes from a lot too. People have this idea of what they think church should be. And even if church is how they think it should be, they still won't go. You feel me? So I'm tired of statements like this. And I think I'm tired of statements like this because I've been on both sides of church where I may have felt this way. And then I worked at a church and realized why it was that way. Do y'all know that we live in the United States of America where people are shooting in churches and people are coming in churches and people are doing crazy stuff all over the world? Like we already know. So should happening. one sect of people be more protected than the others? Listen, to what I'm about to say. Listen, okay. what I'm about to say. So the person, I'm sure we had problems. We've heard this complaint with people. Uh, 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 pastors shouldn't have security guards. Oh, really? You, you don't think so? Or, or uh, 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 the security guards shouldn't be having guns in church. Really? You don't think so? Right? So these statements that, 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 that people are making, to me, they don't make sense because they don't match the reality of what's actually happening in church. It's like, have you lived in America? Like, Because you're making statements as if this stuff doesn't really happen. So that's my, my first part. Now, he mentioned a very stupid thing in there that I thought was just like, does he, did, did he realize what he just said? The nursery worker, just like you said, is preparing for the kids to come to the nursery space. Why would the nursery worker be in the green room when she has to prepare a whole different space of the church? 
the green room are people that are preparing to go on stage. Where else do you want them to go when they first get to church? I'm not sure you want them to sit in the sanctuary and get bothered every two minutes and people coming up to them telling them stories. Cause that's what the bad, that's what happens when you're the pastor. You got to, you, you, you go up there and people want to talk to you for hours and tell you their life story and tell you how much your ministry has impacted them and tell you how great of a job you're doing and all this noise while you're trying to prepare for the sermon. So yes, a green room is absolutely necessary for the pastor. Number one, number Shut two, up, musicians was mentioned in that in that thing. I do agree with that. Musicians shouldn't be able to hide out after they get done, you know, playing for praise and worship. They should go to the the sanctuary and sit down. I totally agree with that part. But where do you want them to go before <laughs> service starts? Like their place of serving is on stage. Do you want them to just sit on stage and wait for service to start? Right? Like they have to, because again, I work at a church. I see this every single Sunday. If you're a singer, you know you have to warm up. You know you have to get ready. You got to prepare. You got to make sure you're reading the right music. You got to pray. All that happens in the green room. You feel me? So don't understand why you're mad at people being in the green room. Now, I don't know about y'all's church, but my church is set up to where it's not exclusively for everybody. Like anybody literally can come in the office. Our office is our green room, right? Like people come in there every single Sunday, they leave, they come in there, they do what they got to do. Um, and everybody pretty much is in that room uh, prepping for service. Um, if you have something to do that's on the stage, on the platform. So I don't understand why I think people see something and they feel, oh, I don't like that. That needs to be tear, tear, torn down. But you just don't like, just because you don't like it doesn't mean that it's bad. Just because you had an, because you see it and it rubs you the wrong way doesn't mean that it's being used the wrong way. And the, like a green room is not contributing to celebrity culture at church. That's the last thing mm. that's contributing so, to celebrity culture at church. There's so much other stuff that could have been said about it that it, that I can tell this person like one either doesn't go to church regularly or two doesn't have a concept of how church a church service is ran. Okay, Brina. Um I think that well one I do think you know green rooms or depending on how the church is set up, you know, a room for whoever's um, on the program or anything where people need a place to prepare, pray, all that stuff. It is necessary. Um, but I do understand why this person made this post. Um, just because, you know, growing up as a PK, there was a lot of times when I, I remember, like, when I would run sound, there would be a lot of people that would um, get done singing or ministers would get done. They'd want to come back in the room and sit and talk and go through their phones. And it's like, okay, service is going on. Um, if it's taking away, like if something like that is taking away from the service, the people who utilize those rooms, if they feel that they are more entitled than everybody else in the congregation, then I think like, yeah, that's an issue. Um because no one person should feel like they're better than anybody else just because they have background access to certain things. Um, so that part I can see. But, I mean, if you abuse, you know, that privilege, then I think that's what this person, you know, wrote this, this post about, is that some people are getting the wrong idea about why that's there. Um, and then it's, you know, interfering with how they interact with the rest of the congregation. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I would I would agree with with, with what Brina said. I wouldn't agree with 100% God's in that they, they don't go to church or they've not been to church. I think what we're listening to is a servant leader complaining about executive leadership. I think that's what we're ultimately listening mm -hmm. to. It sounds like a servant leader mad at executive leadership. And they're like, 
why do you guys act like celebrities? That's what it sounds like. As somebody who has been like Goss on, and yeah. Brina, end quote, on many different sides of the fence. So I've been an assistant, I've been an armor bearer, I've been a leader, I've been a servant leader. I've been on the, I have, I've had to sit on the platform, I've had to sit in the pew, I've had to be in a different, many different spaces in my life as a Christian. And it just sounds like, it sounds like a servant leader, maybe the leader over a particular ministry who doesn't have access to the green room and is upset that the executive leaders yeah. have access to the green room. And they're like, why do they get it? Cause I serve too. Why are they getting it? Cause I serve too. When I first scrolled, I was like, this feels a little whiny. I understand what they're saying though, that in, in that like, because sometimes the musicians abuse the space. Sometimes the pastors hide out in the green room and don't participate in praise and worship with the rest of the church. I do have issues with that. i watch watched like, now those are the kinds of things I watch. If I see a pastor come out, 45 minutes after the praise team has started and they, and they're like not, they're like disengaged cuz my thing is how are you engaged in worship 45 minutes after praise and worship is started? praise and worship oh. was 45 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> that that is a grip. That's a grip. How long is the church service? <laughs> 1 church hour. Service 3 hours. Oh no, not, church not, service. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. That's three that's, hours. that's where that's the <laughs> church yeah. service is 3 hours. That's the difference. Um, you're looking at one hour. She's looking at three hours. I'm right. with you, though. My my church is like an hour and a half. So that means we're not worshiping for 45 minutes. If they're minutes. in there studying on Sunday, then you are already you are already in the wrong. You should have been studying during the week for this sermon. You should not be studying for this sermon on Sunday morning, sir. You are already in the I wrong. I don't know about studying, but yeah. you can be tidying up some things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Um, not only that, but if you are, quote unquote, the lead pastor, a lot of times when you walk in on Sunday, you're often being hit with like you're a lot of different things well, I, yeah. um, as well. But go ahead. Who I agree. Were you? No, well, I'm just, this is my last little bit of point and I'm done. Head senior leadership. Like, and when I say senior leadership, I mean the per person who's the face of the church. They absolutely should be off in the green room because the saints don't know when to stop sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, like everybody want to shake their hand. Everybody want to talk. Oh, pastor, my grandmama died. Can you come to the hospital and, and pray with my grandma? Oh, pastor, my toe hurt. Can you lay hands on my toe right quick before you go up to preach? Ooh, and, and so there's a lot of this kind of distraction of distracting the pastor before he, before he or, or she gets up to preach, right? Before they get up to preach. And so I agree that pastors should actually be in an office in a separate space i just don't like people but but the celebrity culture comes in that people who want to sidle up to the pastor i don't even think it's a pastor's fault most of the times i think people who want to sidle up to the pastor deify them in a way as a means of having access to the level of exclusivity they have so they deify pastors pastors just being shepherds and having big hearts are like oh yeah i love you i love you come in come in come in and then the people who have created this culture of celebrity pastor are like see we sit we we at the cool kids table now and they and they exact that level of snarkiness throughout the whole entire congregation you know what i mean like i don't think it's the pastor's fault per se i honestly think it's the people's the people a lot of the times the people's fault for creating that kind of culture lost and found i'm with you we're not going back to that bondage <laughs> yeah, i don't know if it's bondage <laughs> but i definitely understand not going back let my to people it. go Listen, so After one hour, I will say this. Um, and, I don't, and so I'm trying to actually now dice up what's the difference between a green room and a pastor's office. You know what I mean? Like trying to dice up those different things as well. Um, I would say a pastor obviously needs a place to 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 unwind, to get some things together, yada, 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 before going up. And, 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 and delivering the word of God for that day or that service, whatever the case may be, right? I, I definitely believe that that is uh, important. I also believe it is up to that pastor to make sure that there's a time and a place where they are interacting with congregants uh, doing, you know, ideally maybe after the service or whatever the case may be, so that you do have less of a celebrity type situation. I believe it's important for, uh, uh, thanks, Bree, for pastors to have that, right? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been sung in church my whole life at many different churches. I don't understand a green room need for the musicians. What you or mean? The singers. I don't understand it. Where do they warm um, up no, at? Normally, we warm up. Like every church musicians? I've ever been with, yes. musicians and singers That's normally come in yes. before everybody they else. They need to warm up in the sanctuary. That's where the instruments yeah, are. That's where the instruments are. <laughs> Fam. 
people are in the sanctuary. Why are you warming up where people are in the sanctuary? What normally, are you about? Yeah. Well, musicians in the and, and singers normally come in before everybody else. Yeah. No, for yeah. sure. But after that, after you get done practicing, where do you want them to go? To get like in the ready sanctuary to... with the people. They so can let me be right there in the sanctuary yeah. with the people. They can be up in the area where so they're then, on stage, or they can be sit amongst the congregation. So they're not rock stars, Goss. No, and not, not even rock stars. It's just not efficient. Like you, so you want them to practice to get there early to practice, everybody practice, boom, 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 and then go sit in the congregation. And then when it's time for worship, they come from all over to, to, to go hit the stage. Yes. So Yes. When, when, when we say it's time to worship, to preach. when they we say it's play. time to worship, we're talking about probably ten or fifteen minutes before service starts. Yeah. They need to find their positions up up on the stage because normally yeah. worship is what's introducing the service in general, yes. right? My, yeah. My church does church completely different. I got to remember that that y'all do church. Well, amen. Amen. No. I, I mean, I've, I've been to white churches, and that's how we did it at white churches. I've been to black churches. That's how we did it at black churches. So I'm not sure the order of service at your church, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying no. I've always seen it happen that way. So it, it just doesn't make it any. Uh, I guess yeah, I don't see it. So let me ask you, like, how do you would how would you say your church starts off? Does it not start off with worship or some sort of prayer? Or... What my church? Yeah. No, we start off with the welcome. Um, I probably go up there, welcome everybody to the service. Why you're welcoming? Are music not being played in the background? Like, are people not on instruments in the background nah. while you're welcoming? Nah. Huh. Nah. So while I welcome, um, because we're trying to uh, make the uh, we do the, we do the announcements to welcome, and then we do this thing called two minutes to talk, where you talk to your neighbor for two minutes, and then while they're talking to your neighbor for two minutes, that's when the band is comes music on going on. No, wow. the band's not on stage yet. It's like the a band comes on. The band comes on stage while the two minutes of talk is happening. That's the transition for the band to come on stage. Okay. So when the band, when the, okay, so if the band comes on while the two minutes of talking, that's the transition. Where is the band before the two minutes of talking? So there's a door. You know, you, you, you seen you, Terry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you they're not that in with the congregants. They're not enjoying the welcome. They're not two minutes of talking. There, so you know, no. so you know the door that's right uh -huh. by the, the track. The track. You open yeah. the door and there's that track. Right. They're right there, and then they come inside, and then they wait for me to get done doing the welcome and the two minutes of talk, and then they go on stage from there. So I'm with Judon. I'm like, so the church literally opens up with no music. Yeah, we don't have music until no bed, no nothing. No, and not until it's time for the music. Like Def Jam with a Bible. <laughs> John H. John H. said, and then Carl Lentz comes out in leather pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we're no. not gonna do this to they're, my church. That's what we're not, not gonna do. No, no, no. I can they're rock not. y'all churches <laughs> all night. I can <laughs> rock on y'all churches all night. So don't even get listen, me started. Listen, listen. Nah, so, nah, nah, nah. I'm no, not no, here no, for I, this. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I'm, so not I'm not here for it. I'm not I'm, letting it rock. Every, everybody nope, does stuff differently, right? Every church and everything does stuff differently. I will say majority of churches, Black churches start off with either some sort of worship or yeah. some sort of prayer. Yeah. And in the midst of that, there is normally at the very least a bed of music going on mm -hmm. while that's going on. I went to Brooklyn Tabernacle with Jim Cimbala. Mm. It gets no whiter. Okay, <laughs> seriously. And they opened up with worship. Well, like with them. music, that's them. And I'm just saying, every, were... everybody is different, Goss. I mean, I get it. I, but what can you agree that you would say majority of churches? You've been to a lot of different churches. Majority of churches do so, start with, and they made the musicians some sense. sort of music, worship, bed, music, something. Black churches, yes. Not, well, not. I mean, because I've, I've been to, that. like I said, I go to white churches that start with worship. Not only black and, churches. Yeah, that's true. That's I'm, true. I'm just telling you my experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I got you. So, um, so yeah, so, so, so that's, so that's, I guess my point is band musicians, singers, they should already be in their place on stage. A lot of times when the service starts majority of churches. Um, so that's where that come. That's why the idea of why do they need a green room? You know what I mean? Or, or, or yeah. whatever the case may be. Um, I don't I don't understand a green room on a Sunday, though I'm sure that a huge church would have a green room 
on a Sunday. Um, I don't necessarily understand it. I understand a pastor's office. I feel um, like you need a green room if your if your praise team is more than like eight people. Then yeah, they need a green room because there's like there's a gang of them. They, but that's what the first no, two rows are for. Nah, nah, that don't make no mm -hmm. sense from your last argument. Jr. Psalm says. Uh, we only got four likes. Uh, he said, "Let's let's make sure to fix that." So uh, it please, like please four, do fix that. If you got more than if you have more than like, because some churches, like some big churches, have like a 12, 15 person praise team. Well, then yeah, I guess they would need a space to sit if it's twelve of them and they're warming up in the back prior to service and getting their vocals right and making sure everyone blends and is harmonizing properly. I get that, but even then, how long you you're not you. Y'all gotta sing, so y'all can't stay in the green room the whole time. Y'all have to come and sit in the sanctuary. The musicians, y'all don't need to warm up in the green room because y'all's musician, y'all's instruments ain't in the green room. So y'all should probably be in the sanctuary playing. Nah, with but it doesn't work like that because now when the musicians are taking up seats that the congregants can use, our church is a big church and it fills up quick. So we're trying to people who are we're trying to make room for the people that want seats that don't have Amen. so normally in that situation goss to make sure that musicians are not taking up the space from the congregants the musicians will already be on stage in their set place mm -hmm. yeah. so normally now i understand your church how is you operate your order of service i can right. see how that could right. be true right. right the way that we operate our order of service which is it's nothing different. wrong with how we do it not at there all. is a green room because yeah. we want the space to be open for the guests that come in because our space fills up very quick. We want to make sure that the first time visitors will make sure that the people that are coming there get the exact seats that they want. And our church is sizable when it comes to people that actually don't even go to the church or oh, I'm going to go there, but don't serve in the church. Um, the people that serve, there's over a hundred. Shouts out to Litany in the chat. There's over yeah, 120 no. people that serve. So that's 120 seats that would be taken up if, if we did it y'all's way. But you don't have 120 people in your green room either or in the office. Right. Because because they're not serving in those spaces. Just just like I said earlier, why would the kids ministry person be in the green room? Because their kids space is over here. I still don't understand why the musicians or singers are in the green room. Because that's where their space is at. OK. All right. Um, I mean, that's cool. I mean, like I said, at, I would say that that's definitely not the majority. The majority of churches normally start with some sort of prayer, worship, or singing, and there's normally a bad music. Somebody's playing something underneath. That's the majority. Not that one is right or wrong. I'm just saying that I think you can agree with me that that is the majority. And not even just black churches. I'm talking white churches. Normally start off with some sort of praise and worship or something of that sort, or music going, like the praise and worship team is on stage and music as, as even the pastors welcoming people or whatever the case may be um, in a lot of the white churches I've been to. So, um, but I mean, unless we're talking like a mosque or something, you know what I mean? Then, then maybe we're looking at something different, you know? Um, but, you know, not to say there's one way to do things because there's not, it's just not. Um, but just looking at the majority and that's why I don't see musicians or singers having a need for a green room um, necessarily. Pastors, I, I get a pastor's office. Um, you know, you want to call it a green room, whatever the case may be, depending on the size of the church. Sometimes we adapt terms that not are maybe terrible. are not necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it really could just be the fellowship hall, or you know, and we, we've now called that the green room. You know what I mean? Or, or you know, I'm just saying, or, or on some other uh, the vestibule, or some some other area of the church. Uh, the vestibule is it? Whatever it is, I haven't been to Baptist church in a long time. Hey, y'all better keep um, that same energy for reserve seating. Then, if y'all mad at the green room, I don't want to see no reserve seating at your church. The reserve seating is for the musicians and the praise team. Those first two rows belong to them. That's crazy. I've I've seen that. I've That's seen crazy. That. If that happens, I, I've seen that. Yeah, but, I've seen um, it too. But again, but and cool it's, and it's just and what what that is is just a matter of having access to the stage. Quickly, you like want right. them to be able to quickly get, quick, get to the stage. Get back but when you're done, you don't need to access to the stage when, when, when you're done when praise and worship is over. So there's praise and worship, there's also call, there's offering, there's any selections that happen between when the praise and worship and the pastor speaks. So they need to be able to get back and forth and back and forth and back. And you, you, you do know some call. churches yeah. do have like I've been to a white church that had when I mean, the praise and worship started off, praise and worship came back after. A certain area. I've been to black churches where praise and worship starts off, plays back, yeah. and came back up. But also the church I currently go to, praise and worship get up one time and then they done. 
You know what I mean? They done. Uh, they, so, so, so. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying, don't be mad at the green room if if you're not mad at reserve seating. Uh, again, I don't, I don't Therese necessarily see it as the same thing. Charles, what? Charles said Tyrese got reserve seating at his church. <laughs> and we've we've had this conversation before about even when celebrities <laughs> do come to church, do celebrities need to have a certain level of reserve seating Heck as yeah. to 100%. make sure that they well we've had this conversation before so I, I i don't want to necessarily jump into that um but yeah 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 yeah. so yo lost and found i said the same thing y'all y'all still take offering <laughs> it's like people still pass the bucket yeah most no. people give offering online yeah i'm, I'm, I'm with that and he said y'all still walk in circles and tap the bucket <laughs> i don't know too many cats that walk but I mean, it's, I'm sure it still happens. But I haven't been to a church that walks in a long time. <laughs> John H said um, the music just play, but they don't go to church. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I'm at. Like that's what it that's feels like to me. Facts. Like the kind of music that's that, 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 the musicians don't be safe. Yeah, they come, the they do room. their thing, and then they bounce or they be out back smoking. You know what I mean? Whatever case may be. That's why they want these Negroes in the green room because y'all don't know Jesus. Y'all be in there texting. Y'all be on. Y'all be on POF. <laughs> Hollering at shorties. Y'all be doing everything but worshiping. Get out of the room. POF. That's Listen. crazy. I ain't heard POF in oh, years, bro. That is funny to me. Listen. So, so yeah, I, I do believe that green rooms can create or can add to a celebrity situation. But I also agree, agree with Key's uh, situation, which is normally the person complaining about that is somebody who low keys right. in their heart of hearts probably wants access to that. Yeah. So you don't agree with that? Um, that's it. I agree no, so. I, who said that? Who said I didn't agree with you? anything you I'm said? I'm just asking because you said I you agree with, with what you said. Yeah. No, no, no. I just well, your church does things a little bit different than I'm used to seeing, it, and so it creates another set of situations. So I I, I can understand a little better y'all situations because y'all do stuff. A little differently, which is fine, which is fine, um, and I think I did agree with you on some parts already on this point. Um, I, I think I did agree with you on that. And on some things. Thinking, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about more like even at Calvary, the way Calvary's stage is set up, you can't just walk on stage and go to the musician pit. The pit, the way the stage is set up, it it cut it. It yeah. opened up from the, the musicians room. were already there at Calvary though before service started. Sure, yeah, Weren't yeah, they? but y'all talking they about... They were already in place. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, for sure, because they were doing the invocation and stuff like that. But <laughs> when they leave, I'm saying they can't go back on stage if they go to their congregation. That's why they it's it's more feasible for them to stay in that back area. And there's gotcha, a screen gotcha. back there that they can watch the service, but to go all the way back to the, to the, to the uh, audience and sit in the chairs would be... Like it's not it's not efficient. You can't get back to it unless you go all around the building. So so I, you know, adding that screen that you're talking about there, I mean, that does make a little difference as well. I don't know how many of these green rooms have, uh, but but I mean, I, I hear what, I, I understand, which is every to different services and different churches need different things. I, I would say that to be out front, they they do different things need to, based on how things are set up and whatever the case may be. I do just think as a body and as leadership in a church, executive leadership especially, it is important to be mindful of what's needed and what's not and how things are projected. And that's just simple. And, and you'll never please everybody, right? And if people just operate in a spirit of offense, they will find some reason to be offended. You feel what I'm saying? So, so we're not trying, but we try to our best to think of and accommodate and see what we think would honestly and truly be best for the congregation and for those who are serving. I think is just the ideal thing. Um, so yeah, I think that's my situation. Um, let's see here. So keeping it moving. Taste makers. Class. We do more than make a living. We make a life. Yeah. When everything is dark, we are the light. Yeah. We are the taste makers. Aye, aye. Let tomorrow tell the stories that we make tonight. We do more than make a living. We make.